Documents presented to the House of Commons Health Committee show that if asked, Public Safety Canada would advise people not to wear a mask even while visiting Wuhan, China during the height of the coronavirus pandemic there. So what do you do when this happens? A loved one, let's say it's your dad, drops into the family group chat with something he thinks is real. It's something about China manufacturing the coronavirus. There's a link to a site you've never heard of with a message calling it scary stuff. So what do you do with this? Do you ignore it? Do you call him out saying how ridiculous you think this is? If you do that to your dad, you've actually shamed him. My name is Claire Wardle and I'm the US director of First Draft and we are a nonprofit that we help people navigate the challenges of misinformation online. What happens is that your dad doubles down on his view and he dismisses what you're saying. Use language that's empathetic and to say we're all in this together and rather than you're wrong, I'm right, here are the facts. Hello CBC, my uncle believed the Liberal government and their so-called experts. How do I talk to him to undo the damage they did? Just kidding. <laughs> my relatives might be a little crazy, but they aren't crazy enough to watch the CBC. Today I have documents dated the end of January 2020 presented to the House of Commons Health Committee by Public Safety Canada. These documents are a question and answer prepared internally for ministry bureaucrats to deal with outside inquiries and to provide information to their staff about the coronavirus to then pass on to the public. And these documents are rife with misinformation. The kind of misinformation that Canada's Chief Public Health Officer Theresa Tam warned about in this tweet about spreading. All the while, her and her agency and, well, really the entire Liberal government were spreading what was deadly misinformation themselves. She tweeted, Beware of misinformation about the coronavirus on social media. The best defense against misinformation is fact-checking and knowing your credible sources. Outsmart pandemics starting here. And then she links to the government website on the disease. But here's the thing. The government was the main spreader of virus misinformation early on. Let me show you in these question and answer documents from Public Safety Canada. You can see the misinformation for yourself. Question 12. This question provides bad information on the person-to-person -person spread of the coronavirus. Bad information that may have caused people to become infected themselves. What about reports that it is now believed that the coronavirus can be spread by people who are infected but who are not showing symptoms? The answer. At this time, it is unclear how easily this virus is spread from person to person. Close Prolonged contact, like what you would expect to occur within a household, seems to be required for transmission of the virus. Okay, well, we know that's not true at all. We know the virus can live on surfaces for hours, if not days, and that the virus itself is highly contagious, not requiring prolonged contact at all. Let's take a look at this question, question 13. It's an ironic one about misinformation. What is being done to address misinformation that is circulating on social media now? Friends, I'm pretty sure these bureaucrats don't mean that tweet from the World Health Organization saying that the coronavirus cannot be spread from person to person anyway. The answer, according to these bureaucrats, is... With the spread of information and rumors online and through social media, it is important to consider where the information is coming from before sharing it more broadly. Spreading misinformation, stigmatizing others, or using racist rhetoric will hinder and not help our collective efforts to tackle this outbreak at home in Canada and worldwide as a global connected community. So friends, at the end of January, if you questioned on social media the absolutely wrong information people were receiving from the government and the horrible China-centric World Health Organization at the time about there being no person-to-person -person spread of the coronavirus, if you questioned the government's failure to recommend that people wear masks or the government's failure to close the border, then the government would consider you the racist source of misinformation. Trust the government always. Got it. Now, speaking of bad government information, let's go to question 16. Why is the overall risk within Canada low? Well, that, that sure presumes a lot now, doesn't it? Anyway, the answer, it is unclear how easily this virus spreads from person to person. 
We've already heard that. However, right in the next line, the government again says close, prolonged contact seems to be required for transmission of the virus. So which one is it? And why didn't the government consider close, prolonged contact like being cooped up in an airplane for 13 hours a good way to catch the disease? But this last piece of government misinformation is absolutely insane. It's about masks. Question 17. Do you recommend travelers wear masks while visiting China or quarantine blocked cities within the country such as Wuhan? The answer, no, it is not recommended that healthy travelers wear masks while visiting China or quarantined blocked cities within the country. Let's just stop right there. The Canadian government, as late as the last day of January, would have recommended to travelers who asked that they not wear a mask while visiting China or more specifically, the city of Wuhan, Hubei province, China. I guess when the plan is to give all the masks away like the liberals did, you have to stick with the lie that masks don't work anywhere. Not if you wear them in Canada and certainly not if you wear them in Wuhan, China, the epicenter of the coronavirus. The Canadian government is currently planning a law, an authoritarian law, against what they determine to be coronavirus misinformation. Again, it's like one of those horror movies where the scary phone call is coming from inside the house. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. Since the beginning of this viral pandemic, Health Canada has been parroting bad advice and taking bad direction from the World Health Organization. To sign our petition asking Canada to withdraw from the World Health Organization, go to whowantsout.com.